In the last video, I mentioned that the CCNA CyberOps CERT prepares you for an entry-level job in a security operations center. Basically, something like a tier one alert analyst, a person who is going to be monitoring the network and responding to alerts. It'll be their job to find out or to verify whether this is an actual alert that's worth responding to or whether maybe it's a false positive. If it is a genuine alert, they might have to send that ticket up to a tier two incident responder. And then from there, it may need to go on to a subject matter expert or threat hunter that knows how to, knows more about malware or reverse engineering malware. They could have specialized job roles at that point. And then above it all is the security operations center manager. One of the topics that's pretty interesting in the CCNA CyberOps certification course and exam is the Security Information and Event Management System, or SEAM. SEAMs are equipped with network security monitoring NSM tools. They collect and filter data, detect and classify threats, and are used for analyzing, investigating, and implementing preventive measures. SEAMs include Security Onion, which is a free and open source distribution of Linux with a security monitoring focus and a bunch of tools already configured and ready to go inside of that distribution. Splunk, which is a popular proprietary SEAM, as well as other ones, HP ArcSight, IBM QRadar, LogRhythm, Tripwire Log Center, and Alien Vault. The function of a SEAM is to basically as a point of aggregation where all of the threat intelligence and alerts and logs get sent to the SEAM and it gives the analyst a single place to go to to try to make sense of all the data that's coming in, all of the security related data that's coming into the security operations center. Things like firewall logs and alerts, NetFlow information, server logs, endpoint host intrusion detection system alerts and data, global intel threat feeds, uh, IPS or IDS alerts, uh, snort alerts, and also identifying the context of various assets and having that information of where it's coming from coming into the seam. The components of a seam are, well, there's many, but just to name a few, log collection, which collects information from the various logging sources, Another function is normalization, mapping the data from the different sources into a common data model so that it's in a, a comparable format. Correlating all of the different logs, alerts, and events from disparate systems, and then being able to aggregate that data, reducing the data by consolidating duplicate records. The SEAM also has reporting capabilities for visualization of event information, dashboards, graphs, alerts, and long-term summaries. The SEAM also helps the organization meet compliance requirements that, from various regulations, the ability to uh, implement security and secure data within the organization, and the various requirements regarding that type of data, that type of personal and private data. So not only does the information come into the SEAM, like threat intelligence, NetFlow telemetry, full packet captures, which can be analyzed by the SEAM, anti-malware devices, IDSs, firewalls, server logs and syslogs, but it also can send information out. And that's the compliance reporting, the dashboards and reports, the alerts and automation, and maybe also sending data to other incident management systems that can react or respond to the different alerts. In the book, Network Security Through Data Analysis, Michael Collins breaks it down to the various domains and how, where the sensors function in the various domains and the data that is retrieved in the various domains. So in the network domain, the sensors are NetFlow, intrusion detection systems, and then middle box logs like VPN logs, proxy server logs, NAT firewall logs, and those sensors can be achieved in line on the network, or they could, be, uh, they could be getting their information from network taps or port mirroring. The data that we're talking about from these network sensors is NetFlow data, IDS alerts, and network device and millbox logs. At the service level domain, we're talking about the services, meaning the servers, 
essentially. We're talking about server logs, HTTP server, email server, database server, and LDAP logs, and the data is in the format of log files. And those logs might need to be configured to optimize the type of information that's contained in those logs. At the host domain, we have anti-malware and antivirus software that needs to be installed on the host endpoints, host-based intrusion prevention systems, and event logs. The data is alerts, logs, and historical data, commands that were executed on the system or logins that can be recorded. In the active domain, the active domain refers to the network analyst doing active scanning. We're talking here about active scanning tools like Nmap and um, Ping and Traceroute and any type of active scanning that you would do. Maybe you would do vulnerability scanning with a tool like Nessus. The data is in the form of full packet capture and scanning results. If we talk about Security Onion, Security Onion has a bevy of network security monitoring tools. The tools can be divided up into three levels. Richard Betlich in his book divides it up into these three levels, data collection, data delivery, and data presentation. So the data collectors are tools like Argus, Snort, Suricata, IDSs, and Bro, and they're getting alert data, session data, Argus works with NetFlow data, Bro, which deals with session data, but also transaction data, statistical data, and metadata. The data delivery systems like Syslog, which will send that data to the seam, or CAPME, which can take the full content uh, PCAPs and then send them to a different tool, or OSEC, which will send the information onto the seam from a host, and the Elastic Stash, Elastic Search Log Stash, and Kibana, which is used at the data presentation level. In Security Onion, Elastic Stack replaces Elsa and Sphinx. So at the presentation level, we use tools like Wireshark to present the data to the analyst or TCP dump at the command line. Squeal is an interface for full content data, alert data, session data, and some metadata. So the analyst can use Squeal to, as an interface to see these alerts and to see this data in one place. There's also Squirt, which has a web browser-based interface for alert data from Snort, and Kibana, which I said replaces Elsa in Security Onion, and it's an interface for Bro and alert data and things like that. The types of security data we're talking about is alert data, which consists of messages generated by IDSs or IPSs in response to traffic that violates a rule or matches the signature of a known exploit. The session data and the transaction data. Session data refers to NetFlow data, like the source and destination IP addresses and port numbers, the protocol used, the amount of data that was transferred, the number of packets, and the start and stop times. Transaction data consists of the messages that are exchanged between a host and a server. A good place to find transaction data is in the server's log files. Log data, which is the server logs and host logs, and full packet capture data, which contains the actual contents of the conversations themselves, including the text of the email messages, the HTML and the web pages, and the files that enter or leave the network. To recap, there are a bunch of network monitoring tools, tools that are like protocol analyzers, like TCP dump and Wireshark, NetFlow, which records packet flows, providing basic information about every IP flow forwarded on a device, SIEM itself, which is Security Information Event Management System, which provides real-time reporting and long-term analysis of security events. SNMP, which is an old standard, Simple Network Management Protocol, which provides the ability to request and passively collect information across all network devices, including hosts with the client installed. And log files, syslog log files, which allow security analysts to read and analyze system events and alerts from network devices and servers. Other host logs and events can also be monitored.